So from your compilation of questions in the comment section, it is overwhelmingly clear you guys are really curious how a licensed machine gun manufacturer, aka Mr. Sears Primes, my husband, Matthew Hoover, is doing time in federal prison for uh, machine guns. Or machine guns. A piece of metal with a drawing on it. Let's get into it. And the first thing you need to understand is shopping at only technical fans at my Shopify is the only way to help me with the effects of YouTube demonetization. So thank you, NBC. You can lick me where I pee. <laughs> I don't even know if I want you to even do that because you're definitely full of diseases. So yeah. So the AK story starts with a Florida man down on his luck. And as they say, when one door closes, another one opens. And from this comes an idea of the AKC. It was something physical you could hand somebody and tell them if you were to cut on these lines right here, you would be breaking federal law and could go to prison for it. And they do that for your safety. Tell me these laws don't need to be changed. And the AKC was effective and everybody would um, agree. Wow, I didn't realize these machine gun laws uh, were this crazy. It was a talking point. Uh, a novelty and even uh, the ATF proved by cutting on these lines of the AKC it didn't work it didn't work they even testified that on stand anyways I thought they actually regulated machine guns not pieces of steel but back to the story obviously Justin did his homework first he talked to four different lawyers and also stopped at an ATF booth at a gun show all of them agreed the AKC did not violate the NFA. Worst case scenario would be that it's considered a stencil and the NFA doesn't regulate stencils. At this point, Justin was looking to promote the AKC and reached out to Sears Firearms. I'm guessing for two reasons. One, he's a licensed machine gun manufacturer so he could triple check his homework and make sure it is not regulated by the NFA. Number two, what obviously because he has a YouTube channel and this is where the ball gets kicked off to Sears Firearms. After he receives an email offering a sponsorship contract and a little bit of Justin's backstory on what was going on in Justin's life and how he was down on his luck, Sears agrees to the contract and with like the stipulation he needs to do his homework first, which entailed making sure everything was above board and legal, of course. Yes, he was positive it was legal, but he is a newly licensed machine gun manufacturer with a family. So understandably, he wouldn't fart without getting permission from the ATF. He spent the better part of like two days, if not more, uh, going over case law to make sure this was legal and found a case, it quoted something either is or isn't a machine gun. There is no in between. And that is why he used the phrase, the phrase almost in like every single one of his videos around the time um, of the AKC videos. Next, after having found good case law support in the AKC legality, he called the local ATF field office in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and talked to his ATF representative that helped him get his SOT set up. And they had a lengthy conversation about two different topics, one of which was the legality of a product a company wanted him to advertise for. After describing the product in great detail, a flat piece of uh, stainless steel the size of like a credit card with a laser etching of a lightning link engraved on it surface, the ATF agent told him it was 100% legal because it either is or is not a drop-in auto sear. So if you can't take the AKC and drop it in uh, a firearm, then it is not a machine gun conversion device. What you are describing at worst case is a stencil and the NFA does not regulate stencils. Understand this conversation happened years ago, so I am paraphrasing, it is not word for word, but it is the gist of the conversation, and it was something like that, and I also knew that he called the ATF. Anyways, so then Sears contacts Justin and says the advertisement has a green light and informs him that the ATF agent told him they had just made a decision on this exact topic for a similar product. And the opinion letter said just because something has the potential of creating a machine gun conversion device does not mean it needs to be regulated by the NFA. And from there, it is all history. So then Justin paid him for the sponsorship and Sears hits the ground running and this continued only for like three, four months when Justin gets kidnapped by the ATF in Operation Lightning Strike. About three months later, I get subpoenaed in front of the grand jury and CRS gets hot. He is pissed because they refuse to allow me to do this over Zoom. 
Like, it is unnecessary for me to, to drive all the way to fucking Florida for this. But they just do this to waste your time and money and to try to piss you off. Like I said, these are not human beings because human beings don't act like that. So anyways, yeah, he got pissed that they wouldn't allow me to do Zoom because I we had just literally had like a baby not too long ago. Uh, so we were forced to pick up the infant and pull the oldest out of school and drive to the opposite side of the country just so I can speak in person when it easily could have been handled over Zoom. And he called a federal prosecutor a cunt and also started relentlessly making fun of her in Wisconsin and Evening, gorgeous. Hello. Well, you're doing a good job out there. Thank Appreciate you. The support, babe. Yeah, of course. Miss you so much. I know I miss you too so much. Aw. <laughs> How was your day? Are well, you the letters I get you uh, the letters that I uh, get you while I'm in here, they say you're doing a really good job, so I wish I could see your videos because I guess you're just killing it. Aw, that's awesome. I love you, babe. I'll call you later. I'm gonna try to make it out to wreck. Yeah, get some fresh air. It's nice outside. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow, is it? <laughs> yeah. You sound like you are getting a little bit better. Yes, I feel so much better than I guess. Like, I slept the whole day yesterday. Last night, I woke up in a puddle of sweat. Like, but today, I don't feel bad. Yeah, yeah, you sounded like ass yesterday. I felt so bad. Yeah, getting all that muscle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, babe, you're going to have to, like, claw some chick's eyes out or, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do. You're funny. I don't know how possessive you are. <laughs> I look. <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> I'm being serious, but, yeah, it's funny. Babe, I can handle myself. Come on now. <laughs> you're like, I got a gun. <laughs> Babe, you're funny. Oh. All right, I love you, miss you so much. I'll call okay. you later. All right, I love you too, miss you too so much. Bye. Mm -hmm. Love you, bye. Mm. Now, fast forward to Cirrus arrested and incarcerated in Wisconsin, and at his arrangement, the Wisconsin judge said, "I'm looking at three factors." Machine gun chargers are a big deal and need to be taken seriously because they have to do with public safety. Number two, CRS has zero criminal history. Number three, I actually went and looked at this AKC thing and I don't know what it is and I deal with a real criminals and he is free to go. Basically, that was the gist of it. Then we have to make arrangements to go back and forth to Florida uh, for different court hearings, which was just a giant waste of time and money, uh, just to find out every single motion his lawyers put in was denied, basically, including transfer to venue back to Wisconsin where he lives and his kids go to school and he has uh, a house. The prosecutors and judges' reasoning for this is the cost of living in Jacksonville, Florida is cheaper than the cost of living in Green Bay, Wisconsin, so it'd be cheaper for him to sell his house and move to Jacksonville, Florida, than it would be to sell his house and move to Green Bay, Wisconsin. We, we literally live a couple hours from like courthouse in Green Bay, and uh, there, there would be no need to sell the house, but you can't make this shit up. But if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and read the paperwork yourself. And now we come on the Bruin and the EPA decision. Just a quick recap, the Bruin decision says that in order for a gun law to be constitutional, it must have text history and tradition around the time of the founding of the Second Amendment. Uh, so in short, a laser engraved piece of stainless steel didn't exist in 1791, let alone stainless steel, probably. So if the AKC is considered a firearm, there is no way it could be constitutionally regulated. And then we have the EPA decision that says that laws must be enforced as written. And enforcement agencies cannot be changing or interpreting the laws like all willy-nilly anymore. And the law they charge CRS Farms and Justin is a combination of parts designed and intended for use in converting a weapon into a machine gun. And since the AKC is a single piece of steel, like it or not, or technically or not, a single piece of steel is only a part and cannot be parts. Plural with an S. How did the judge handle this stuff? 
she said they would let the jury decide even though a Quashma law is not supposed to go to trial. This should have been handled in civil court where they would have decided the legality of the AKC long before criminal charges should have even ever happened. And at this point, Sierra still has no idea why he's indicted because what is written on paper doesn't make any sense at all. So now let's fast forward to the bench trial. Now a bench trial is utilized when you are talking about hot button issues such as like guns, abortions, etc. This is used because of negative public opinion and stigma. So you remove the jury out of the equation and have the judge look at the law and stipulated facts. However, the prosecutor threw a hand grenade in this before it happened to avoid going to like bench trial. I am assuming because she did not like the stipulated facts because once her propaganda and conspiracy theories was removed from the equation, it was quite painfully obvious Sirius didn't break the law. Yeah, he could have pushed the issue and forced the bench trial to happen, but after the hand grenade, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze anymore. So now we are 30 days from the trial and the prosecution hits them with 1.6 terabytes of discovery. Now this part really didn't have a factor in getting him convicted, but it was still bullshit that the prosecution was allowed to do that because they were drowning him in discovery the entire case. Now let's fast forward to the actual trial. So what was their evidence to prove their conspiracy? It revolves around three factors. One, Justin bought me a LV bag for Christmas and not sure what that has to do with CRS and the entire conspiracy, but they continuously brought it up throughout the trial. And honestly, I think the prosecution just wanted my bag, which the PSR lady uh, didn't let her have it because she said it was irrelevant to the case. Two, the next factor would be CRS made a phone call to Justin while he was locked up, informing him he was going to get him a lawyer and believed he would win the case because the AKC is not illegal. Then the third factor was because CRS started to go fund me for Justin. I know you're expecting more, but that is literally it. Now let's fast forward to the jury finding CRS guilty. So how did the jury find that a picture drawn on a piece of stainless steel was a machine gun. Simple, they changed the law. They changed it from a combination of parts designed and intended for use in converting a weapon into a machine gun to the items transferred design and intended to be a combination of parts that would convert a weapon into a machine gun. I know, what a mouthful. Yeah, they sound really similar, but the difference is in their new law, it allows for the potential of parts and the old law said it must be parts. Yes, there's a lot of more to this story, but that is the short version. How a licensed machine gun manufacturer is in prison for uh, um, machine guns. And if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to continue supporting me and my family through all this crazy nonsense, there'll be links down in the description, such as like Amazon. And even when you click on that link, if you don't buy what's in the box, just because you came off there of my channel, I get a kickback, so I really appreciate that. Um, and there's other ways to support too in the description. And until next time guys, peace. Yo, I almost just took that down and ate shit. Oh, what, what you are describing at worst case. Quiet! Stop! Like I said, these are not human beings. Come on, Kiki! Oh, this fucking cat, dude. All right, I'm moving the chair. No, get the hell out. She's gonna try to jump.